Our guest in this segment is Pasha Majdi. He is elected. You can't say re-elected because he wasn't elected the first time he was appointed. He is elected as a commissioner in Jefferson County, Harpers Ferry District, if I am correct on this one. Pasha, good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's my pleasure. And it is the Harpers Ferry District this time, right? This time it is, yes. My home district, Harpers Ferry. Yeah, and you were pointed out of which district before? Charlestown. Charlestown, very good. So four new members of the Jefferson County Commission. Uh, Jack Hefeste is one of those. Michael Mood is the other. Who else am I missing here? Kara Keys, I think, right? Kara Keys, yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Pasha, have you worked with any of those other folks previously in, in any roles or ways? Not in a professional sense as a commissioner, but I know all three really well, and we've worked together and had a meeting of the minds on different issues. I've got to tell you, we are very much aligned, and I'm eagerly awaiting a, a professional collaboration once we're all on the commission. What are you folks hoping to accomplish for this upcoming legislative, well, I guess not a legislative year for a, Jeff for a, commission, a county commission, but for this upcoming year? Because... I know you've started doing some quote-unquote repair work, but what else needs to be done? We need to grow our commercial tax base so we can pay for our critical services, emergency services, police, fire, ambulance, etc. One thing that's pretty strange about Jefferson County, our top 10 employers, 9 out of the 10 are all either government or nonprofit. And we love them. We love them to death. They're fantastic. But because they're in those sectors, they don't pay taxes. So one out of, uh, of the ten is contributing to our tax base, the casino. We love them. But we need a few more in those top ten that are part of our commercial tax base. What I heard when I was going around on the debate circuit, believe it or not, uh, there was a lot of agreement between the Republican Party and the Democrat Party on um, a whole host of issues. But on one issue, I think the Republicans really stood out uh, as the candidates for the commission – down the line, Jack, Mike, Kara, and I, all four of us said we need to grow our commercial tax base. And that means bringing in new development that's commercial development that brings jobs and growth. How do you do that? Well, the first thing you got to do is uh, create a stable government. We did that last year. Uh, so we got out of that era of chaos that was, frankly, scaring away businesses and investors. And the next thing you got to do is partner with JCDA. We have a brand new executive at the JCDA, Jefferson County Development Authority, Krista Hoffman. She's coming off of uh, a successful apple butter festival as leader of the Morgan County Chamber of Commerce. And one of the things I've talked about on your show and around the county is we need to promote agro-tourism in Jefferson County. And an apple butter festival is an example of that, highlighting our agricultural sector, our farmers, their product, highlighting that through tourism and growing our tourism uh, industry. But there's other things you can do, like uh, bringing in businesses that bring jobs with them and having commercial growth in the county. And you can do that by partnering through JCDA, by making it easier uh, to work in the county. For example, we're bringing in the YMCA. YMCA has a, is, a, is a terrific valued partner that brings a lot of benefits. But one thing that's really important for the workforce is they provide daycare. We have a huge daycare shortage in our county. And when you have daycare services coming in for hundreds of people through an institution like that, that makes it a lot easier to go to work in Jefferson County and not have to commute all the way to Loudoun or Fairfax County or Southern Maryland or D.C., Pasha, that's a big issue in Jefferson County because Jefferson, as a work county, is largely a commuter county, is it not? Two-thirds, yeah. Mr. Gilstrap. I am surprised, having come <clears throat> excuse me, from Northern Virginia a couple of years ago, moving here, where commercial daycare centers like Kinder Care and, and you know, all of these... Goddard Center uh, and all that. Yeah, yeah, they're just... You, you you pay to put your kids there and you go to work and, and you come back. And in this case, people are committing uh, commuting into into DC. Why aren't why aren't those here? Do we is it a, a difficult are they difficult to build here? The franchise kind of daycare centers. That could be part of it. I, I honestly don't have a good answer for you. I don't know why they're not here. I've been focused on the other end of the problem, which is uh, how do we bring in more daycare services? And we're we're bringing in a big chunk to the YMCA. Once that gets done. Uh, we'll be in a great position. I can tell you uh, today, this morning's meeting, 
we'll have a resolution from the county commission um, calling for the YMCA to come to the county, showing support from the county government. And, you know, over the past year, we didn't have a lot of that. We didn't have stability. We, we had some chaos that it took months to repair. But now we're in a position where we can say, look, Jefferson County is open for business. We want development here. We want commercial growth. Maybe the pace of housing is a little bit too much, too fast. But the Republicans who all got elected and have a strong mandate from Trump to Morrissey all the way down to the commission, we want to see commercial growth in the county. You mentioned Morrissey, and obviously he's a Jefferson County resident as well as a Canala County resident, uh, too. What does it mean to Jefferson County to have the first Eastern Panhandle governor, Pasha? Total game changer. We're going to have the governor and his staff working on economic development, not just in Charleston, but right here in Jefferson County. Uh, I think it's going to be fantastic. I've met with him a couple times over the past week, and we've uh, shared some ideas for what could be great for Jefferson County. And it's pretty much exactly what uh, we've been talking about during this conversation and all the Republican candidates have been saying. Look, um, you know, solar's got its issues. We, we've got to work that out. Um, solar and housing should not be the only thing farmers can do with their land in Jefferson County. We need to build a commercial tax base, and you do that with growth to bring in businesses and jobs that comes with those businesses. Well, you could start growing grapes and do a heck of a vineyard business, let me tell you that. I'd wow. love to see that. Uh, we had a, a, a great meeting with Delegate Wayne Clark, who passed a bill uh, during this past legislative session to make our rules and regulations on par with Maryland and Virginia so we can finally compete uh, with the different regions. You know, you, you drive on Route 9 coming from Virginia into West Virginia. You've got wineries on the left, wineries on the right. You're surrounded. Once you hit that border, you don't see anything. Mm -hmm. And it, it can't be ecological, right? It's got to be laws and regulations. Thankfully, De Delegate Clark led that e effort in the legislature. Now it's upon us to work with our new director of the JCDA, Ms. Hoffman, who, by the way, has an agricultural background. She just did that apple butter festival. And see how we can promote tourism for wineries, breweries, distilleries right here in Jefferson County. And i got to give you all kudos. You know, um, I was talking about that a couple months ago, and you said, I think Delegate Clark just passed a bill on that. And i, I got to admit, I was ignorant about that. I didn't know. After the radio show with you all, I gave him a call. I said, hey, we got to work together on this. And that's what kick-started the conversation. So thanks to you. You're welcome, Mr. Harvey. Yeah, I, I was going to ask about agritourism. Like, if what can the county do to encourage people to change their farms from soybeans to some sort of tourist destination? As opposed to converting it to solar or just in general? In, in general, quite frankly. Well, right now I can tell you, with the new law in place, I don't know what the remaining obstacles are. We have to listen to farmers, stakeholders, investors, business community, and ask them, okay, now that we have a new legal landscape, what are the hurdles that you have to overcome? I would assume a big part of it is drawing the investment, and that's something that we have to do through JCDA and promoting that as a, as a use that could be great in this area and talking to landowners and saying, hey, have you talked to this class of investors who may be interested in investing in, in this community? Um, I don't know that they've done that yet because it's been so difficult in the past, but thanks to Delegate Clark, a lot of those hurdles have been cleared. Now it's up to uh, JCDA and the local um, governance to capitalize on that. Well, it just seems like this is kind of a question, but is the has anybody looked at whether the market for vineyards is saturated? Is somebody going to drive an additional 35, 40 minutes to go past all those in Loudoun County to come to Jefferson County? Well, maybe people in West Virginia would go here instead of Virginia. Well, yeah, and, and you know, I, I just I just wonder um you know, I mean, they're beautiful. They're they're great for events and they're great spaces. I just wonder if if that's been looked at whether there's a market for that. It hasn't been looked at. That's the first thing we got to do. You know, when we were trying to bring in the YMCA, uh, and when when we're when we're making big decisions on development, often we'll start with something called a feasibility study. And one of the key elements of the feasibility study is assessing the market that surrounds you. That's the first thing we have to do. And 
like I was saying earlier, when you're driving on Route 9 into Jefferson County, you're surrounded by them. So that could be a big element of it, Matt. It could be saturated already, so we'd have to differentiate ourselves. We'd have to have a different type of winery uh, to draw people in, or maybe it shows that, yes, there's a lot of wineries on that side of the border, but there's plenty of demand that it needs to be met. I don't have those answers yet, but I do know this is why we partner with JCDA, we work with them, we bring in stakeholders to answer those questions so they can feel confident making an investment. You know, uh, I'll give you an example of where I think this is an empty market, Pasha, and, and, and Matt too, for that matter. I've mentioned this on this show before. A couple of years ago, my wife got together with a bunch of her high school friends, and they had a reunion of however many years it's been. And they're all, they all grew up in Pittsburgh, and they met in Harper's Ferry. And they did a lot of stuff in Harper's Ferry. But when it came time to go to wineries, they drove across the border into Loudoun County, and into Maryland, uh, there's a couple of them that are right across the bridge there. And that's what they did on, on the days when they would go out in the afternoon and go driving places. So did West Virginia get any of that business? No, not a penny. Not a single cent of that I, business I went to West Virginia. With, uh, yeah, Rob, I, I did the same with my family a few months ago. Um, I have extended family that still lives in Northern Virginia. They haven't taken the leap yet. I'm recruiting them to, get, to move out here. It's so much better out here. But... Um, you know, the, the, the plan was to go to a winery, and I said, gosh, man, we really ought to be out in the West Virginia. When we were sitting there having a good time, I was looking around and saying, this is, this is what uh, Jefferson County should look like. I mean, this is just beautiful. Everybody's having a good time spending money. Uh, and, of course, the commissioner uh, in me was thinking, and generating tax revenue. You know, that's a, that's a good thing that we ought to have on our side of the border. Yeah, if you, if there's a place called— how does, it, how does it generate revenue for the county? Oh, well, you've got— uh, every time you've got uh, businesses uh, growing in Jefferson County, it's good for Jefferson County. Property values will go up. You get jobs. Uh, you have sales. That's 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 good all the way around. Uh, I'm not an economist, but I can tell you, a rising tide lifts all boats. Do, is there uh, there, I've, there is a sales tax on alcohol that makes its way back to the county? Is that correct? Uh, to be honest with you, I got to look at what the new rules are uh, because they changed this year. I don't have an answer for you, but I can figure that out, and that's part of what this working group is going to do. If there is, what a are, yeah, what are the new rules? How do they apply? How do how do we differentiate ourselves from what's going on in Loudoun County so we can attract customers who might want to do something a little bit different, but they're interested in wineries, breweries, distilleries, et cetera. I do want to say, as much as I love this topic, I don't think it's the only type of commercial growth. We, growth we can have it's agritourism is important but we've got to do other things to bring in jobs so people don't have to leave the county uh, to work i leave the county to work i don't think there's anything wrong with that but we want more options before we leave this topic <clears throat> though i want to point out there's um there's a hybrid solution i just came back from a trip to france for a couple of weeks we, on the train going down to normandy they have fields acres and acres of um solar fields they're all elevated and underneath the solar panels are vineyards or are grapevines and and other crops that are being grown because it gets very hot in the summertime so they're doing both they're doing the the solar and they're growing crops as well so it doesn't have to be either or fair point it doesn't uh, there are some um the term of art is agrivoltaics right so where you blend uh, a solar farm with active farming uh, and a agricultural activity. Um, that is something that we could do uh, in Jefferson County. But, uh, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what the future is there. We've got to huddle up as a new commission. Um, the reason I bring it up is I think we kind of missed that opportunity. That's the nice way to say it, uh, with the way the original uh, Solar Tax Amendment was drafted. Uh, that was an opportunity we could have seized, but we, we missed the boat there. Um, I wasn't on the commission, but you know, it's always easier to criticize after the fact, and I don't want to play Monday morning quarterback, but I have heard a lot of feedback from constituents. Hey, the status quo ain't working. Um, you should have done things a little bit differently, and that's definitely one of those things. The, the other things would be screening, setbacks, uh, um, monitoring, effluent, making sure we don't have uh, runoff into rivers. Uh, this is something I heard a lot on the campaign trail, and we're definitely going to need to see some major, major changes to the status quo with solar. You have zoning, so is there anything you can do within those zoning restrictions regarding the setbacks, Pasha? 
Absolutely, yeah. They can be changed, and, and I want to clarify, none of that would apply retroactively. Sure. But for new applications, that would apply. And that, that for me, that's priority number one, but there's a long list. When will the commission vote for a president of the commission? That would be, I think, January of next year. Typically, at the first meeting, right? So I think it would be January of next year. Matt, do you know the details of that in terms of when that vote is held? I, I don't without looking it up. Okay. So uh, do you know the temperature of the room in regards to, uh, or even if Steve Stolliver wants to return as president or who might want to be a president? I don't. Um, I can tell you, uh, Steve and I have served on the commission together. Uh, there's this perception out there. Uh, that I've heard on the campaign trail that, you know, he's really interested in being president. He wants to hold on to power and whatnot. I can tell you from behind the scenes, he didn't even want to serve as president this last term. Um, that's just the way it worked out in terms of votes. So uh, sometimes perception does not match reality. Uh, we have a really good working relationship. I have a terrific working relationship with Jack Epstein, Mike Mood, and Kara Keyes. I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue because um, all five of us are going to get along so well. But we'll see in January. Did you regard the uh, new appointees as rubber stamps for Steve Stolifer as it was being portrayed in many social media areas, Pasha? No, and I can tell you, um, I've served with uh, Commissioner Stolifer on the commission for several months now. Not once has he come to me, not once has he come to me and said, I need your vote on this. It, you know, it's typically... At, during a meeting, we'll say, well, what do you think? What do you think? And then we'll try and do what's best for the county. So this idea that there's this uh, uh, game uh, behind the scenes, uh, I can tell you from personal experience, it's just never happened. Uh, there was also a perception that um, he was blocking agenda items. You know, every time I've asked for an agenda item, it's gotten right onto the agenda. I didn't have any problems except for once when I submitted it after the deadline. And that came from the county staff saying, hey, we have to have a, a rule. So if you're after the deadline, it's a no. If you're before the deadline, it's a yes. And it's not really a discretionary thing. It's just timing. Around the state, Republicans were elected to the statewide offices with 70% of the vote. In Berkeley County, those who had only Berkeley County territories in the House of Delegates won with around 70 or more than 70% of the vote. However, in Jefferson County and in the races where Jefferson County and Berkeley County were part of the territory together, Republicans got anywhere from 53 to 61 percent of the vote. What does that tell you about Jefferson County, Pasha? We're a little bit closer to D.C., and I think folks are sick and tired of the D.C. Republican type who their agenda is just to say no to whatever the Democrats want to do. Uh, and Trump has totally reversed that. Uh, Governor Morrissey will totally reverse that. This new movement is attracting a lot of enthusiasm because it's setting a conservative agenda. How do you govern with a conservative agenda? Let's actually do things for our county, not be the party of no. Uh, we also are a more purple county than Berkeley, uh, Berkeley County in terms of demographics go. But I can tell you there's a lot of enthusiasm for uh, President Trump, Governor-elect Morrissey, and for the Republicans down the ballot who actually want to govern and govern from a conservative perspective, get things done. But there was also a lot of enthusiasm for the Democratic candidates on the ticket based on the numbers that they pulled in the 40s and something, whereas in Berkeley County they were high 20s or, or 30 percent. So it seems like you've got a large number of registered Democrats who voted who want to make sure you folks know that they still are paying attention. And I'm paying attention right back to them, I'll tell you. Um, I had a really uh, good race uh, with Lene Johnson. Ms. Johnson and I had a respectful uh, race, a campaign in which nobody attacked the other person on character or extraneous mud-slinging issues. I have a lot of respect for Ms. Johnson. I want to congratulate her on running a clean race. I wish all the races were just as clean. And i got to say, um, I, I have always treated people from the from a different party uh, with respect, and I'll continue to do that. Um, I live in a neighborhood where I think that, I don't know what the numbers are exactly, but it's not a red district or precinct, I should say. Uh, it's definitely a blue one. I'm respectful to all my neighbors. I listen to people. And quite frankly, a lot of local issues aren't really hyper-partisan. So it's, uh, I'll continue to do that. But the takeaway for me 
from this election is that there is a mandate to govern for the Republican Party, from Trump to Morrissey all the way down to the county commission. And it's time to do things and to act. The old way of doing business, of just complaining about Democrats and sitting back and not doing anything, that's not going to cut it anymore. It's time to govern, and it's time to take Jefferson County forward, move Jefferson County forward while following conservative principles. About two minutes left, Pasha. You mentioned that it's not just about attracting wineries to Jefferson County. There's more industry you like to bring in. Tell me about those businesses. I don't want to be selective and say we want this type or that type, but I can tell you, if, you, if you're coming into the county and you want to bring hundreds of jobs, um, I'm going to be favorable to that um, so long as you follow our ordinances, uh, so long as we are protecting our natural resources. But i got to tell you, across the board, all the Republicans and myself included, we want commercial growth. We want businesses that bring jobs. Um, and if it fits into the tourism industry, which is a, a favorite topic of mine, even better. Pasha, thanks for your time this morning. I think you got a meeting to get to, right? I got one minute to cross the street. I'll be there on time. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Pasha Majdi, elected as commissioner in Jefferson County. And Matt, that'll be an interesting room. Four new voices in there, along with uh, Steve Stolifer, who's still back for uh, the rest of his term. Is that, is that a question? <laughs> an open-ended statement. No, I th- I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. It's right? an interesting challenge to bring businesses with hundreds of jobs that put a lot of pressure on roads, which takes away the bucolic nature of Jefferson County. It's, it's a tough balance. Can't have both. They'll try, right? They'll try. Okay. So anyway, it seems that, uh, is it fair to say that the Jefferson County Commission is on a more stable footing now? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, it would have to be. <laughs> Comparatively yeah, speaking, yeah. Right?